a New Zealand owned manufacturing company. You probably haven't heard of us, but our brands like Mother Earth, Allison's Pantry, Donovan's Chocolates, Hadrill's Honey are, are household names. Until about six years ago, we were entirely a domestic New Zealand market. But we developed a strategy where we really targeted growing into the international market. And over that six year period, we've grown to about $100 million of international sales. Uh, it hasn't always been easy. Uh, we haven't always succeeded, but over time we've built it and we've developed a lot of learnings about what you need to do to build an international business. So if you're looking at exporting from New Zealand, the obvious market to look at first is Australia. It's not that far away, it's five times our size, and in terms of food and beverage, they're consuming similar products to New Zealand consumers. And when we looked at Australia, there are really three criteria that we think are the most important if you're going to succeed in the Australian market. The first is for a New Zealand manufacturer, are you any good in New Zealand? Because there's no point going to Australia, which is a more difficult market, if you aren't good in the New Zealand market. Number two is doing your research on the Australian market. NZTE is a great help for that, but so are other people who've uh, kind of worked in the market and developed that market, because it is a, in a market where you really need to decide how you want to play and who you want to play with, what your business model is going to be. And the last piece is all about your investment curve, because it's not that likely that you can go into these new markets and instantly you're going to make money from day one. So the thing about it is, what's your investment going to be? How much money is it going to take? And one of the things that we've certainly learnt is whatever plan you've got, you've got to deal with the fact that it'll probably take you longer and that investment in part will probably be longer than you thought. So you've got to make sure you're robust for the whole of the journey rather than just the first six months or a year. The other thing that we've learnt is that while you're growing in other markets, if you're a New Zealand company, it's really important that you still focus on your New Zealand market. That's where a lot of your innovation comes from, and I've always stressed for our customers in New Zealand that we still very much focus on them while we're building an international business. So once you've considered Australia, then Asia is obviously the next market, except it's not one market, it's a whole series of markets. And for those markets, these are the key things that we've learnt from them. Number one is that research is important yet again. So again, with NZTE, there's very good networks and information about the markets you operate in. And one of the key decisions you need to make is, do you keep the same product that worked in New Zealand and Australia, or do you need to tailor it for any of those markets? Number two is really all about uh, the investment curve again, because these are massive markets. Uh, I went to visit a, not that long ago uh, uh, a tier two Chinese city called Ningbo. Never heard of it before. Six million people. So that kind of gives the scale that, we're, that we operate in if we're New Zealand companies going to work in those markets. And I guess that comes then to the most important point of all, is around collaboration. And as New Zealand companies really thinking about, we compete very strongly in the New Zealand market together, but when we're overseas, we are part of New Zealand Inc. in some way. And there are things that we can do to collaborate that doesn't interfere with our own potential, but gives us all much greater potential. And that's creating the scale, that's creating the expertise. And I think as we target these markets in Asia and Southeast Asia, that collaboration aspect is hugely important for us. Mm -hmm.